You guys have had a very successful podcast the past couple of years alongside Brandon Marshall and Chad Johnson. And you really revolutionized the way people look at athletes. You humanize yourselves and talk about real issues. And that's no more. You've started your own podcast, The Pivot, and there's got to be a reason for that. So I, what happened? What was, why did you guys break up? I'm going to crank up Freddie. Bad business branding. <laughs> I, think, I mean, the business wasn't, wasn't right. Uh, you know, we, we put a lot of work into it. Um, it was something that neither of us thought would blow up as big as it did. So that pretty much got out in front of the business part of it. But uh, at the very end of the day, as, as friends, which we thought we were, you know, there were some mutual considerations that should have happened, you know, as we're going and building the podcast. Uh, none of that, you know, happened. So um, Channing and I, you know, along with a few other friends, we came up with a few ideas to do a podcast. And we just thought the pivot was the perfect name. Um, obviously, bringing Ryan into the mix, that was the best addition that, you know, timing is everything. And Ryan was the best addition for us, so we got the pivot, and it's it's an amazing platform. Yeah, it just uh you know to when you start something from, from the ground roots, you know you sit in the backyard playing with the kids, and you say let's start a podcast, and it's how it's happened. And then Fred was around the corner, we drove the golf cart around and asked Fred to be it. So it was some guys getting together and you know trying to create something. And like Freddie said, we didn't think it would blow up like it did, but when it did, and you know things went crazy and you know it became you know international i got people you know texting me from london and dm me from different places and you're thinking okay you're growing this together and then um you know brandon doesn't really value you know value other people like we value the friendship and that's what it was it was just the um inconsiderate approach to how you know how the business was being done and to where now it's blowing up now the business is going now money's starting to come in and now you know i'm not an employee we're not employees we're creators. We're we're a part of this, and it was just so the the fundamentals. Do you were think you were so treated like up. an employee? Uh, yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Once you start talking about business, you know, business and contracts and where we're gonna go, it's oh, uh, we're gonna you know give you this much purpose, so this much and that. And it was like, no, no, no. We're we're from the gra grassroots. We're 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 an equity owner of this because we all built it together. And and, and Brandon didn't think of us that way, so we had to you know had to pivot, and that, <laughs> that's what you know we had to go our dip, uh, our different direction and um. People make podcasts. Names don't make podcasts. So yeah. the, the pivot's a great, you know, we, we love the name. We love the, you know, the branding of it. But people make podcasts. And that's what Brandon doesn't do. He doesn't value people that way. And so what are the next steps with you guys, though? Because you've obviously moved on. You started your own podcast. He's continuing I Am Athlete. He's had a rotation of hosts come in. What do you, where do you go from here? How do you continue to finalize whatever money is owed or breach of contract? Well, that, that part that part will take care of itself, right? There's still some lingering business that got to get buttoned up from that end. But uh, we've completely uh, you know, disassociated ourselves and our focus is our focus. Our main focus is the pivot, you know, growing our own business and our own brand and giving people really the same, you know, the same chemistry and formula that we were given over at, uh, you know, I am athlete, but uh, we want to be consistent. You know, we want to be uh, transparent and really just have fun in the process. So, it's, you know, it's not rocket science. We're three friends that knows and respect each other really well. And that's where it all starts. You got to be able to value those friendships and those relationships. And we just want to keep building on that and, and really just allow our audience the same, you know, the same, so they can see this is how successful relationships and friendships and partnerships should be. You can do it. Mm -hmm. You just got to, you know, trust in each other and value each other and do it. So sky's the limit for us. And Ryan, for you, what was your main goal when you joined this podcast with them? How did you want to differentiate it from what I Am Athlete? Well, I think, the, I think it's hard. It's hard to differentiate it when you have two of the popular the most popular people in the podcast world on your podcast right and so they came to fame on i am athlete like there, there's no way around that right there's no way for us to ever truly disassociate channing crowder and fred taylor from i am athlete you know a, a lot of our success and having early eyes on us was because of what they did in building that podcast and i say in building that podcast because they were a part of that and so you know my first thing and they all knew i was like hey man can y'all fix the other one Right. Is there something y'all could do to fix that? You know, and after having those conversations and knowing that they couldn't like I would be a fool to not be a part of it. Right. We got the, the, one of the best producers in the world that produces our show. 
Like, and I think the other piece of it is, you know, we're like a traveling band now. Like, honestly, because what we did, everybody was like, you know what? We're going to do whatever we can to make this the best podcast in the world. And so in doing that, we travel to people. You know, like we've been in Nashville, we've been in Vegas, we've been in Florida, we've been in New Jersey, like we've been in LA twice. And it's wherever, wherever we can make the best podcast and get the best people, we're gonna go and do that. And the way you differentiate it is like he said, people make podcasts, right? Like they will always be them themselves. I'm gonna always be me. And what, what, what I've learned already though, is that could change every show, like that evolves, right? We had Marshawn on and we had a, two of the best running backs to ever play the game and Fred took the lead and we got to sit back and enjoy it. And then Channing comes with the quick witted, uh, with the quick witted quips and that's who we are. And I think, I think it's not about differentiating ourselves from that. It's about building something bigger, building something better. And the only way you do that is by respecting each other. And so when this all started, we got on the phone and we was like, let's chop it up about the business. Cause we expect this to be huge, unlike what they, when they started, it was, this wasn't a backyard porch thing. This was a Zoom call contract thing. And that's how we approached it. And so in front of the cameras, it's a podcast, right? Whenever we walk in the round, it's a friendship. But in the end, it's a business. And we understand that. And we made sure the business was right before we started making, you know, making shows. And when you guys started the I Am Athlete podcast, the entire idea was to just have a place, a safe place really, to have these authentic relationships and again, humanize yourselves. And you're continuing to do that with the pivot. But personally, how freeing has it been for you now as former athletes to talk about these issues that you couldn't talk about when you were an employee of the NFL? Yeah, it is, um, it's very freeing. And it's, you know, we try to do it for the, the, the guests as well, but ourselves, to your point, ourselves. And, you know, you're in the, we're all in the media and our different, you know, markets. And, um, you have, you know, the producers and directors and everybody, you know, they, they want to angle you towards this and give you a, a rundown of what to say, what to do, you know, move forward, move this. We cr we, we have creative control for everything mm -hmm. we do and for our guests. So even when guys come on and, you know, you're so used to as an athlete for the media to try to box try to in. box you in and manipulate you and they, they want to get their answers. And it's not like that. So when guys come on the show, we have, you know, tons of great guests, big names. And we say, listen, if you say something crazy, just say, no, nah, cut that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll re-ask the question. Like, yep. and that's the thing to have your own creative control and and know that you're you're in control of the narrative you want to put out. And if you say something crazy, blah, reset it. And it's cool. And people love that. And we tell them that. And it's just freeing. So it's really sitting down, forgetting the cameras are there yeah. that we can't do when you play. You can't do that when you play. You have to think about the shield. You got to think about the name, you know, the, yeah. the, the emblem on the side of the helmet. With us, bro, sit down and talk to your homeboys. The, the freest place. Yeah. The freest place for us when during our time when we played was the locker room. Mm. That was the one place that you could be yourself. Right. And uh, really, that, that's what this is. But we, 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 we we're more experienced. You know, we lived that life, we lived through a lot. We had a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we, we understand, um, you know, current events and what's going on around us. We're, we're damn near old, we're, we're, we're not old men yet. <laughs> but we, we, you know, we're, we're just more, near. Like more wise. Dang near. So we're, we're able to just give that back, right? So uh, th that's what it is. So it's, it's, a, it's a blessing for us, you know, just be able to have these conversations and, you know, just chop it up with each other, knowing that we're gonna help somebody. We don't know who. But we know it's going to touch someone. I think I would say this. Um, for me, it's been it's not about it being free, but it's truly therapy. Like, to be honest, I think, you know, like, obviously, they talked about mental health a lot on their mm -hmm. former show. And we have we don't really talk about it as much, but it's a form of therapy. You just sit. You're not sitting on a therapist's couch. Right. We're sitting in we're sitting in freaking clubs and in restaurants and we're doing all of these shows. But there's so many times that there's something on my mind already and we get in there and we chop it up and Channing may say something or Fred may say something that sparks something in me. And so I think it's it's also about healing. You know what I'm saying? Every time you get an opportunity to truly express what you're going through or what you went through and you feel like that conversation or those words can help someone else. I think it's a it's it's, it's therapy for us to continue to to grow and heal from traumas in our lives as well. And as therapeutic as it is. For you as former players, I think it's therapeutic for fans as well to get a different perspective and a perspective from people who actually played in the league, saw things firsthand, 
There's a lot of topics now that come out that fans can easily dismiss saying that's not an issue in the NFL. That doesn't happen. One of them being Brian Flores lawsuit. Racial inequalities in the NFL, it's nothing new, but there is a spotlight being shown on it. So now as an outsider looking in, but someone who was playing in the league, what is your take on the lawsuit and the media and the league's reaction to the allegations? Um, my take, we know it's a problem. And to be honest, I don't think Brian Flores did it for, you know, money grab or anything like that. You know, he did it just to bring it back up. Rooney rules in 03. And you see that it didn't change anything before this week. And they did hire a number of black coaches now with this coaching cycle. But it was just Mike Tomlin, you know, until they hired, you know, Lovey Smith, Michael McDaniel, Michael McDaniel, different yeah. people. So, you knew it was a problem and Rooney Rule didn't change it. So I think Flores just wanted to bring it back up and what his experiences were and what what he saw. And I'm a Miami guy. So really respect Brian Flores, you know, been at alumni meetings with him and respect him as a man. And he even said it. He wanted to bring it back to the forefront. And we know it's a problem. Over 70 percent of the league's black and one black head coach. That's a problem. Why, why aren't we represented equally in the front offices, equally as the GMs, equally as head coaches, like we are represented as the players? The whole, you know, the, um, the uh, owner of the Texans went back and was like, don't let the inmates run the asylum. Not inmates, we make the league. You know what I'm saying? Like the players make the league, so we should be represented in the front office is just as much as we're represented on the field when we're making, netting the NFL $9 billion a year. The players do that. So why aren't we represented in the front office? And I think it was, it was, it was, it was just to bring it back to the forefront that this is still an issue. 2022, everything that's going on, this is still an issue in the NFL, one of the biggest businesses in the world. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I've talked about it at nauseum on air. Um, the NFL and America as a whole, as a society, we want to push these things to the side and say that they don't exist because once you are aware that they exist, then somebody has to come up with a solution. Uh, there's 29 white billionaires that make these decisions on who gets to be executives, right? On who gets to be head coaches. There's no way around that. I've sat at the table with these people and negotiated contracts and listened to them talk to players and say we're just assets, right, to be traded. Um, the separation between ownership and labor in the NFL is the most vast separation in all of major sports, right? And it's because of the way that these people came to ownership. It's because of the way that they converse. And so if we don't get in those rooms, and this is why representation matters because we aren't in those rooms for those conversations. And so they go with familiarity, right? There's uh, racial bias that is in there. It's implicit bias because people look like me, people feel like me, people sound like me. Those things are familiar, so their point resonates with me and I feel like it'll resonate with my team. But you gotta understand, your team don't look like that. That is not a representation of your team. And this is historic in this sense. 80% of the people hired to be coaches, head coaches, are coordinators, right? Look, think about the black coordinators in the league. Think about black offensive, uh, think about black uh, quarterback coaches, black offensive line coaches. See, they'll put you in the rooms with the running backs because you can relate, the DBs, the wide receivers, but those people don't get elevated to coordinating positions. And it goes back to this. Many coordinators and head coaches who were former quarterbacks were backup quarterbacks. Tell me the last time we had a black Chase Daniel. We had a black Mike Glennon, right? We don't get to be backups. And everybody points to the best quarterbacks in the league. Oh, you got Mahomes and Lamar and Russell and Dak. All these people make all this money. It's because they're exceptional. And like everything else in life for black people, if you are not exceptional, you don't get it. If you don't separate yourself, you don't have it. And I think we see that a lot with the head coaching positions in the NFL. I don't need to say anything. They did a great job. <laughs> Obviously, John Madden recently passed away. He had a huge impact on the game. So as fans growing up at the game, playing at a young age, and then playing alongside him being in the broadcast booth, what is your favorite John Madden memory? Uh, for me, my rookie year, just finding myself in the game. You know, and they would say, Madden is in the game. And if you were in the game, you know, you were doing something. You know, anytime he broadcasts your game and says your name, yeah. You know, it's just an amazing feeling. Um, that's, I mean, so many, but for me, those are the initial memories that come to mind. Honestly, my favorite memory of him is not just one memory. It's that his voice is the voice that plays in my head when I watch football, right? When you knew when you tuned in 
to watch him, to watch a football game, you weren't just tuning in to see the guys on the field. You were going to be entertained, um, educated and captivated by the voice dictating the game. And I thought that was, I think when you, when your voice becomes synonymous with something so huge, it really says how special you are. The fights after playing the video games, when somebody whoops you, and you know what I'm saying, we still had the cord on our on the back of the man that came out, that long cord. So I remember taking the cord out and whooping one of my friends because he was cheating. You can't throw bombs every play. But <laughs> yes, you can. It's a game. But no, like, like but it's talking about football. Like you, you're playing it, and then it's the voice, and then he was talking about it. He was commentating games. But then you go home and play it, so you're watching him on TV. You're listening to his voice call real games. Then you're listening to his voice call video game, you know, video games. So yeah. from a, as Legit. a kid yeah. all the way to a grown man, the voice of football was John Madden, and yeah. it, it was just amazing that he he was that much of the part of the game. And we didn't even talk about him coaching. Yep. We didn't talk about the part of him really being yeah. in the football, really being in the NFL and the video game side. So if you say football and John Madden's name doesn't come up, you don't know football. That's real. So just give a plug for the pivot. Where can you watch it? When do you air? Two. You got it. So we at, so so <laughs> here we go. Uh, you can watch the pivot uh, on YouTube. You can subscribe. Uh, we also have the audio podcast. Uh, we really we're supposed to release at twelve o'clock. Uh, 12 Eastern every Tuesday, but for some reason our producers also been making us release on Fridays uh, And the Friday shows just come out whenever uh, We hope to continue to you know be on more platforms, but uh, please subscribe. Please like uh, we appreciate all the support That's right. Yeah, appreciate it. Pros as always. Thank you. We appreciate it. So good to see you. What's up, man? How you doing?